Luke chapter 19, specifically verses 37 and 38. Blessed is the one coming, the king, in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. You may be seated. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're at the beginning of a new church year, and with the new church year comes a new set of readings. Each year's readings are focused on a specific gospel. So this year's church year is focused on Luke. Last year was Mark, next year will be Matthew, and then it rotates each year. It gives us a unique reading each year of the mission and ministry of Christ. The church year also starts with the season of Advent. It's a time of preparation and anticipation, just like we see in Lent right before Easter. But what does that preparation look like? Does it look like Hallmark movies getting us in the mood for Christmas? Or does it sound like all of the radio stations transitioning to Christmas-esque music? Or does it just look like us going through our advent calendars, pulling the candy each day, really counting down for the big gift and family day of Christmas? Well, it's not really about any of those things. The real purpose of Advent is to lead us in waiting and hoping for the coming of Christ. In Advent, we reflect on the promises of God, and we look forward to the coming of the Savior of the world, the King. As far as Luke's account of Advent and Christmas events goes, they are by far the most detailed out of any of the Gospels. You're probably very accustomed to hearing his stories around this time of year. The stories like Gabriel visiting Mary, announcing the birth of Christ. Uh, Caesar's decree for a census to be taken. The angels visiting the shepherds in the field. Those things are found only in Luke. So with all of those familiar readings, and with us being at the beginning of Advent, you look at your bulletin cover and you expect to see palm branches instead of poinsettias. This account from Luke about the triumphal entry into Jerusalem on what we call Palm Sunday just doesn't seem to fit. It comes right before Jesus is sentenced to death and hung on the cross. Well, what if I told you that this reading today is very appropriate for the beginning of our church year and for the beginning of Advent? It's very appropriate because our whole church here is centered around Christ. And this reading about Jesus' entry into Jerusalem on Holy Week leads us right into the central work of Christ. His death on the cross and his resurrection from the grave for the forgiveness of sins that gives us hope for eternal life to come. Jesus' death and resurrection as the Savior of this world is central not only to our church here, but to our Christian faith. Jesus came to earth in the flesh to bring the kingdom of God to the people then, and he comes now in your hearts by faith through the Holy Spirit, and he promises to come again in glory. The people in our reading saw all of these miraculous events that the one who was coming, that is Jesus, had been doing. The multitude of disciples were there praising him because they knew that these events were leading to the culmination of their salvation. Now, they didn't know exactly how this was going to happen, and Honestly, some of them probably thought he was going to be some mighty earthly king. And they certainly did not understand how his work of salvation 
was going to be done through death on a cross and humility. But there is one thing that they knew very well. They knew that this man that had come, Jesus Christ, would be the one to save them. In fact, Luke records that these praising and rejoicing disciples were calling Jesus the one who was coming, the king, the one who would bring peace in heaven and glory in the highest. We hear their song. We hear them singing together, Blessed is the one who is coming, the king in the name of the Lord, peace in heaven and glory in the highest. Hmm. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. That sounds familiar. Does that sound familiar to you? We've heard it before. We heard it when the angels sang to the shepherds in the field. They sang glory to God in the highest and peace on earth among those with whom he is well pleased. So... If we're being responsible readers of scripture, we have to ask ourselves, what gives? What's this connection between peace on earth and peace in heaven? The song of the angels and the song of the disciples. Well, simply put, the connection is Jesus. Jesus is that connection. Jesus himself is the intersection between peace on earth and peace in heaven. Peace is only possible through Christ. We know that, don't we? We see that in our world here on earth every day. We're steeped in war and disunity and hate and division. We can't keep the peace by ourselves. Just look at the world around us. Look at the lack of peace in the events in Afghanistan. Or look at the reckless driver through the parade in Waukesha, Wisconsin. Or look at the mass amount of high profile murder trials that we've seen in the news lately. We just can't do it ourselves. We can't bring peace on earth. Jesus alone brings peace on earth. And he did just that. Jesus made peace between earth and heaven in his victory over sin. Paul wrote to the Colossians about Jesus. He wrote this, For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether on heaven or on earth, making peace by the blood of his cross. By Jesus' blood on the cross, you were brought from death to life. Peace between earth and heaven was made in Christ's victory over sin, death, and the devil. Don't get me wrong, you were in sin. You were separated from the kingdom of God. But now, you've been reconciled to him. Now, you have peace with God the Father Almighty through his son, Jesus Christ, your Savior. So do you see how this account of Jesus entering into Jerusalem leading to the culmination of his ministry on the cross is such an appropriate start to our church here. It starts our year off reminding us that we've been brought from death to life. That you've been brought from death to life. And because you've been brought from the kingdom of death to the kingdom of life through Christ, you experience God's grace in your life. By God's grace, you've been adopted into his family through the waters of baptism. By God's grace, your faith is strengthened through the hearing of his word. 
by God's grace, your spirit is renewed in the partaking of his body and his blood for you. You're part of the communion of saints. This Advent season is for focusing on Christ, the King, your Savior, just as the disciples did there in Jerusalem. You stand with the crowd of disciples, shouting and rejoicing, peace in heaven, glory in the highest. But you know, as well as I do, that this season of Advent brings some distractions along with it. They cause us to lose our focus on Christ. Some of these distractions are things like Christmas shopping. We got stuck at Edinburgh for way too long yesterday. Things like Christmas plays and pageants. Trying to decide what you want more, your two front teeth or a hippopotamus. And maybe even decorating our churches and our homes while we rock around the Christmas tree. These things are not bad in themselves, but they can become a distraction for us during the season of Advent. And when they become a distraction, we lose our focus and we fail. We fail at praising Christ the King. But we thank God for this time of Advent in our church. This time of Advent that allows us to accept the refocusing toward Christ, the reorientation toward God's gift in our King, who promised to come in glory, to bring complete peace on earth and in heaven. So we stand together during this Advent season rejoicing as the disciples did in Jerusalem, singing, Blessed is the one who is coming, the King, in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. In the name of Jesus Christ, our King. Amen.